guys and welcome back to Beauty in the Bookcase. So today's video is going to be another get ready with me, but it's going to have a bit of a twist. So usually I kind of stick to talking about the makeup and last week I was doing an Irish inspired look so I talked about Ireland, but today I wanted to talk about untranslatable words we should be using. So I think the number one word that really popped into my mind when I wanted to make this video was actually a German word. Um, which is Backpfeifengesicht. Now, a Backpfeifengesicht is somebody who has a face deserving to be slapped or punched. I think that's just really funny and oddly specific, which I think the German language is, is known for its ridiculous specificity. Um, but yeah, I think that would be such a useful, you know, we have all these moments where you just find people who are just being so beyond obnoxious or rude or whatever and you just want to call them something and there's not a word and you're just like oh I just see that person and they annoy me so much and now you can call them a Backpfeifengesicht. Another useful German word is Erklärungsnot. Now this is a word that anyone who has what we call in English foot in mouth syndrome um, would would benefit from. It's, it's sort of when you make a mistake or when you say something maybe super outrageous and you need to like quickly explain yourself. So I think we've all had moments where we've said something and everyone just looks at us like, huh? And you're like, no, let me explain myself. And now you know what that feeling is called. Schlimmbesserung. I think we've all experienced this without knowing there was a word for it, which is Schlimmbesserung is when somebody tries to do something supposedly to help, but it actually just makes like ends up making everything worse. I think we can all think of moments where we've been the cause of it or where somebody attempted to to fix things for us and just made them worse. Another untranslatable word that I find really, really interesting that, you know, the concept has a name is Torschluss panic, which is kind of like gate closing panic. Um, it's kind of, kind of like FOMO, I guess, but more focused, not just on like missing out in little moments or missing out in like cool stuff you could be doing, but more sort of the anxiety and the stress we feel when we're getting older and we feel like we're not achieving all the things that we wanted to have done by that age. And I think that's a really, it's really cool that that word exists, that concept exists, because I think it, it helps us to remember that everyone's kind of on the same boat, you know, we're not the only ones feeling absolutely stressed out by the fact that we haven't done everything that we want to do in life yet. And I think especially as like young people, we've found ourselves with this immense pressure to like have it all together by the time we're like in our thirties, we just expected that that's what it was going to be like. And then, you know, you get to your mid twenties and you're maybe still trying to figure it out. And it's, you know, you get filled with Torschluss panic. Um, so I think it's it's nice to know that the word exists if nothing then at least for the knowledge that we're not alone and feeling like we're running out of time. The next word that we have is actually a Japanese word. And I think it's I guess it's kind of relevant to the times we're we're living in when we feel so much stress and so much uncertainty. So this word is shoganai, and it's sort of almost like that idea of like, well, such is life, but not really in a rude way. It's just kind of trying to tell you like, yeah, bad things are gonna happen and you can't stop all of them. So you might as well stop worrying about them and enjoy the good things that do come along. Um, now moving on into Spanish, because here, because it's my first language, I have a lot of poems. I'll sometimes be speaking in English and being like, why don't you have this word? <laughs> um, or sometimes it's even worse to do have translations and don't 
that don't convey the exact sensation, I guess. My sister is always annoyed at the fact that decepcionado in English is disappointed. Because it doesn't, you know, disappointed almost feels kind of like, ah, shucks. Whereas decepcionado, it's like this overwhelming feeling of just being let down by something or someone. And so she she always says she's she's anglicized the word decepcionado into deceptionated. Because yeah, she's she's pretty annoyed that there is no word in English that conveys the the exact same weight, I guess, than than the Spanish. Um, but for me, the words that I often find myself sort of being like, oh my god, why does this not exist? One of them, and it's it's not like it's a life or death kind of word that I'm like, oh my god, this should exist. Uh, but the word empalagarse, I always wish I had that word like at my disposal. <laughs> Empalagarse is when you're eating something that's so sweet that like you just you can't have more than one bite you know you get that sensation of like of it being almost sickly but sickly isn't exactly like a one-to-one -one. but the other two words though they're not as serious as this last one um they're more just like concepts that exist in Spanish and sometimes I wish I could use them in English they're just really specific, like time specific concepts. And I think they're nice. I think they're useful. And it kind of sucks that they don't exist in, in English. Because for example, the word um, madrugada, that's one concept that I'm like, what do we call this time? Because you, in English, you'd say maybe like the early morning or like the wee hours of the morning or something like that. But like, la madrugada is the time between like nighttime and morning, but not the entire span of it. It's just kind of like the time right before and as the sun rises. Just like the word like an anteayer or antier, which in Puerto Rico we pronounce as antiel, um, which is like the day before yesterday. But instead of having to say the day before yesterday, you just have one word and it's easy and it's simple and I just wish that we could all get on the same boat and just use that word. Sorry about that rant. <laughs> I guess I feel very passionately about time specific concepts. Um, moving on from Spanish, um, I found a really cute um, Swedish word. It's um, moangata. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that entirely right. A lot of these kind of just came from internet pronunciations that I saw. Um, so if you know Swedish and I'm saying it wrong, please feel free to correct me. But uh, Moangata is kind of, it's it's a concept referring to like the road-like reflection that the moon makes on, on water. Um, I think it's such like a beautiful concept to have. It's very like romantic. And it, it's one of those things where you know, it, like it, it's one of those things that as a concept it comes up on on stories quite often I'd say um, where there will be somebody just hanging around like a lake or a river or the ocean or whatever and then they'll be like talking about the reflection of the moon of course and how neat that they could actually have a word to, to talk about it instead of having to be like, oh yes, the reflection of the moon on the water creating a road, blah, blah, blah. Um, I mean, I, I know that I'm always like, mm, description is important, blah, 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 be specific, but I mean, you can't get more specific than that. I think it still carries the same type of idea and it still gives you that vivid description. It just does it in less words and that's cool. I like very, oddly specific concepts because you know there's some that sometimes they're they're necessary and sometimes you're like oh okay yeah that's that's really useful and then other times you're like I mean I guess it's useful but like we can also use the, the long description so I don't know 
on a separate note, I guess kind of going back to sadder, it's not really a sad word, but the word um, ufta is sort of, it's an expression that you'd use when somebody sort of injures themselves. Um, so from what I've read, it's sort of a combination of like, ouch, but also like, I'm sorry that happened to you. Uh, it's a fun word and therefore we should use it. But it's also, it's also nice, you know, it's, it takes on that concern for the other person. Like, you know, you empathize and you also like sympathize. So clever enough. Um, the next one, it's not really a word. It's more of an expression or like a concept as well. Um, you might have heard it because I know that I've seen it before and it does seem to have equivalents in other languages, just not in English and as far as I know, not in Spanish. So it's um, it's French and it's uh, Esprit de l'Escalier, which, um, it, I mean, it literally means like the spirit of the stairs, but it's, it's kind of like when you go to, like when you think of the right thing to say after the events have happened, so you go like, ah, well, is that what you think? Because really, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, like you had like a crummy comeback the first time around. And then now that the moments pass, you're like, oh, that's what I should have said. I just thought of the thing, which I guess in, in English might just kind of be closer to like shower thoughts. Like just when you have that moment and you're like, just doing something else you're like at work and you're still like fuming over something that happened earlier and then you know you think of just the right thing and you're like oh no why couldn't my brain work and give me this earlier instead of making me look dumb <laughs> now this next expression i kind of just found it a little funny but also like yeah i can see how that would be useful um so it's the italian expression Cavoli riscaldati. Um, it literally means like reheated cabbage, I think. But it's 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 meant to express like when somebody's trying to revive an old relationship instead of just leaving it alone. I was just like accurate. <laughs> um, it's it's kind of a silly concept, but uh, definitely useful. I would say. I think. We've all either been the person or seen somebody kind of desperately trying to revive a relationship that, that wasn't working and sometimes that wasn't even healthy to begin with. So, you know, I also think it'd be really funny if we did sort of anglicize it because it could be like, hey, stop reheating the cabbage. Um, and if people could understand that. But not everyone, it'd be kind of funny because you'd be like, oh, you know, Samantha's just trying to reheat the cabbage again with John. And like the people around you would be like, what does that even mean? So, you know, it can be kind of like uh, speaking code. <laughs> the untranslatable club coming at you. On a very different, <laughs> I guess, spectrum of of words. Um, there's the Greek word parea. Now parea I actually really liked when I found it. Um, parea is when friends get together to just discuss like their philosophies and their beliefs and their thoughts and all that type of stuff. Um, I, I used to kind of do that actually when when I was in, in Ireland we'd like go to the pub and we'd go to like old man pubs so like, you know, where they weren't super loud and you could actually have a conversation and just chill. And yeah, and we'd literally just sit there and talk about all sorts of stuff about life. And sometimes it was actually sort of deep and personal. And sometimes it was just, you know, you talked about dumb stuff. But all in all, it was such a nice experience. And um, seeing that there is a word for, for that. Uh, it's fun, you know, you could like text your friends and be like, hey, who's up for like a paria today? <laughs> Another word that I actually thought was 
so beautiful and that I also think would be nice to incorporate into our vocabulary and into our lives, I guess, is it's a Polish word. It's doze voce. And doze voce is essentially a contract made between parents and children in which parents agree to provide support for their kids for life. And it's not kind of like a financial contract. It's more kind of like a, you're my child and I will support you every day of your life with everything you do. I also found this Indonesian word that I related to on a spiritual level because I make really bad jokes, as I'm sure you guys have noticed. Um, it's not like revelation here that my jokes mostly consist of like dad jokes and puns. So they're not, you know, the best. <laughs> and there's an Indonesian word, which is Deus. And Jeus is essentially like a joke so bad that you can't help but laugh at it. And when I saw that word, I was like, all of my jokes. Yes, thank you. Tell them to laugh. <laughs> so I thought that was a fun word. Um, I'm sure we all have a friend. In my case, I am that friend um, who just can't help but constantly make awful jokes and being like, I'm hilarious. I'm a comedic genius. <laughs> On a super different note, um, another word I found that I actually thought was like oddly specific but really cute is uh, cafune. It's um, a Portuguese word which means like running your hands lovingly through your partner's hair. And I was, again, my brain just went to like, oh, that would be like so nice to have in a novel because you can just, there you go, explain it, keep moving on, but still capture that moment and that concept. I guess the last sort of like generally useful word that I found was, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's generally useful. It's useful for people who like books, <laughs> essentially. Um, it's uh, vademecum. So vademecum is essentially a book that like a friend you carry through life and it, it works as like a guide for, for right and wrong. And it's, it's, it's a Latin expression, and I think as readers, we might have, we probably have more than, than one book, you know. When I talked about A Tale for the Time Being, that would be one of my Father Mekums, as well as like Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar. Um, you know, just, just bodies of, of work that impact us so much that we carry them with, maybe not physically, but we carry them in our hearts because they've had an impact on how we view the world and how we want to to act, I guess. Boom. If you keep hearing jingling and stuff, my dog is in here because he was barking because he got anxious. I don't know about, about what, and I didn't want to leave him alone. So that's, that's his nose. Tucker, come here. Oh, nope, he went the wrong way. Bye. I'll insert a picture somewhere. Now, there was also a, a separate list I made of words that were relevant to the event that we are living through and that we can't name for some reason on YouTube because there's weird rules on here. So yeah, one of those, the first one, which I find hilarious, and you might've heard this one before because it's, it's more popular on the list of like words that you wish you had in your language, but you don't. And it's Kummerspeck, which is literally like grief bacon. And it's, it's a German word and essentially it's just, it's a word used for like emotional eating. And I'm sure we are all doing a whole lot of that. Um, what I do want actually is a word for just like eating when you're out of boredom. <laughs> That's what we need. Germany, get on it. Or if anybody does have a word for that, let us know. <laughs> Another one that I laughed when I saw this word because it generally made me go like, yeah, that's like the theme of, of quarantine apparently, is um, agyotori. Agyotori is a, it's a Japanese word. I'm sorry for that pronunciation, by the way. I know it's abysmal. Um, but agyotori is essentially looking worse after a haircut, which if you've attempted to cut your hair at home, I'm sure you understand this word. I would never. I I get stressed when a professional touches my hair with scissors. I don't know. 
if you did it and it turned out great, <laughs> thank your lucky stars, I'll tell you that much. Um, but yeah, that was so specific. I thought it was funny. I mean, uh, there's a sunduku, which if you are an avid reader, I'm sure you have seen this word come up in your some type of group or you've seen it before somewhere, which is sunduku is um, buying books and then just like not reading them, which I'm sure we're all guilty of doing. This shelf behind me, just pretend it doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> I am trying to get through them. I am, but you know, it's it's one of those. It's it's the fact that as a reader and as a lover of books, you're always going to just be like, "Ooh, this sounds interesting," and this sounds interesting, and then you just kind of keep building up your collection to the point that like you might not be able to get through every single book you buy in your lifetime. But the good news is that I did see a study that was done a while ago um, that essentially said it's good to surround yourself with more books than you could ever read because it works as like a motivator for you to, to keep reading and to keep searching for, for knowledge. And I thought that was pretty nice. So Sundaku is actually good science says so. There's also um, the Nor there's also the Norwegian utepils, which is um, sort of seating, sitting outside on a nice summer day. Uh, sorry, a nice sunny day and enjoying a beer. I thought that one was cute, I'm sure. Um, now that we're all probably getting quite stir crazy, everyone's trying to at least go out into a balcony or something if they have one and just getting a bit of sunshine and just relaxing and trying to make the best of it. And I just wanted to conclude on the word which is a Swedish word, um, which essentially is like a like a three fill of coffee. So it's like your third cup of coffee in a row. Um, I wanted to include this one in particular for my sister because she is a coffee fiend. So is my mom. So there you go. Learn that word. Treator. It's and now you can just be like, can I get a treator and just shout, shout, Treator! And the third cup of coffee appears. It's, it's science. So that is all for today, guys. I'm sorry if this video was kind of all over the place. I really liked the idea, but I guess I didn't really know how to present it. I was just going like, here's this word, here's this other word. Um, so yeah, sorry if it's kind of all over the place, but um, I do want to start um, making more videos about languages. So... I don't know why my dear friends decided that the language I should learn is Irish. So that's probably gonna be a video that's coming soon. I'm, it's a little hard to find solid resources regarding Irish online sometimes. So I have one of my Irish friends who studies the language sort of helping me with it. So that will be coming soon. So I'm excited to, to learn um, Irish with you guys. And aside from that, I'll be doing different languages. My plan is to sort of like three weeks of one language, then jump to the next, and then eventually sort of rotate back around. Um, so yeah, I hope if you guys like that idea, if there's a language you guys want me to, to learn, make sure to leave a comment about it. And yeah, if you recreate this look as always, make sure to go tag me on Instagram and you can read some of my work on my blog, which is down in the description below, and I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.